So we've landed on Mars, uh, and now we have to tackle a, a lot of very pressing uh, concerns. Um, wh what do we have to do first? Where do we live? Well, on Earth we need um, food, water, shelter, and clothing to survive, and on Mars we need food, water, shelter, clothing, and oxygen to breathe. So we will have some oxygen that we carry with us, so that won't be an initial problem. But finding water very soon will be a big problem. And we have machines um, that can extract water from the Martian atmosphere. Um, uh, that machine is called WAVAR. And we have machines that can produce oxygen for lots and lots of people. And um, we can Wait, live uh, underground. I'm going, I'm going to the WAVAR. There it is. There it is. It's actually my favorite gadget, so I really so like that one. So WAVAR is just a box, and it was invented about uh, 15 years ago. And it has a fan on one end and a clump of a mineral called zeolite in it. And zeolite is found easily on Earth, and it's found easily on Mars. And we would suck in the Martian atmosphere, which, even though it's extremely thin, is 100% humid every night. So every night on Mars is complete humidity. And we suck this, the air in, uh, the, the Martian atmosphere in, pass it over the zeolite. The zeolite fills up with water by stealing the water vapor out of the Martian atmosphere, out of the CO2. And then we simply squeeze the zeolite, and we have water. So that solves one big problem. Now, that's not the ultimate solution to water. We don't really want to be re reliant on machinery um, to bring us water because there's already a lot of water on Mars, and vast quantities of ice on Mars. In fact, it's estimated that if all the ice on Mars were to melt, the planet would be 300 meters deep covered entirely in water. So there's a lot of water there. A lot of it is frozen in the soil. So uh, a lot of the soil on Mars is really actually like marshland, but it froze, and it's hard as a rock. Um, and eventually, we should be able to find, and we may even find liquid water, but we should be able to find uh, large quantities of water or ice just below the surface of Mars. Or we may land, choose to land in a crater that already has a sheet of ice on it. We photograph lots of craters on Mars that have a sheet of water ice on them. So eventually, we don't want to rely on that waiver. We want to find a permanent source of water. And that should not be very hard. The other machinery you see here um, is a machine called MOXIE, and that's an acronym. Uh, it was a machine developed at MIT a few years ago. And it's a, really a reverse fuel cell. And the Martian atmosphere is 96% CO2. If you take the carbon atom off of CO2, then you're left with pure oxygen. And that's what the MOXIE machine can do. And if you look at the Martian atmosphere of CO2 and you say, what are we going to breathe? Oh, there's that oxygen. It's 72% oxygen. The carbon only weighs 28% um, of, of the molecule. So there is lots of oxygen uh, bound up in the CO2 in the Martian atmosphere. And MOXIE can get it for us. In 2020, we're going to launch the second generation Curiosity rover to Mars. And there's a little box right on the corner of the front of that new generation Curiosity rover. And it's a MOXIE machine. And we're sending it to test it in the Martian environment. But it was, should produce enough oxygen continuously to keep one person alive indefinitely. And that machine, that little test machine, is designed to be expanded and blown up a hundred times. And what we will eventually do in a few years is send a very large MOXIE machine to Mars with storage tanks. And we will land them there. And the Mo we will turn on the MOXIE machine, and it will start making oxygen, and it will fill storage tanks with liquid oxygen, which we can use in two ways. One is to allow people to breathe when they get there, but also it's a major component of rocket fuel. Zobat Kit.